Alrighty, so today what I'm going to be testing out is uh, missile defense. So we're going to start this by looking at how potent Aegis is. So we're going to find a good test area. It looks like Florida is it. So we're going to have blue 4 and op 4. And they'll be hostile towards each other. All right, so op four is going to have a base. Oh, US, Florida. We'll give them Jacksonville. I think it has like four runways, two runways, and a runway grade track. Nah, runway grade taxiway. That's plenty of runways in case we do decide to launch uh, bombers from there or something. So we're going to give it E3G sentries. We've got two of them so we can have constant patrolling. I don't think this will take more than like 12 hours, whatever they could stay airborne for, but can't hurt. All right, so we'll make a AWACS patrol, support mission, assign both aircraft. Radar's on, one at a time, and now we're going to put in on the blue four about here, Ticonderoga. And we're going to put one in from modern times. So if we look here, the missile defense rating is 96 missiles, which I'm curious if the original Tycho's would have had such a uh, high missile defense rating. 64. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't think that they would have that, to be honest. So, yep, that is the earliest one. All right, well, either way. I'm predicting that that missile defense is not going to be entirely accurate, um, especially not with surface skimmers. And the reason being is just how many missiles it can launch at a time, which uh, not trying to make this not sound impressive, but it's going to be hard pressed to shoot down that many surface skimmers coming towards it. Anyway, uh, the purpose of this is going to be to start with, uh, oops, to start with uh, anti-ship missiles from its arrow, like the harpoon, and work our way up. So, the first thing we want to test out is the Evolve Sea Sparrow missile. So this is probably the least good of the three uh, main defensive missiles that it can use. Evolved Sea Sparrow missile is the shortest range. I believe it requires an illumination radar. Then there's the SM2, which is longer range, requires an, S uh, sorry, an illumination radar. And the SM6, which is much longer range, should be more accurate and also fire and forget. So first we're just gonna look real quick. So range, anti-air, 30 miles, chance to hit, 90%. Semi-active radar homing, and it uses a Aegis data link to guide it to the target. And it can go fast, reasonably fast. So 2.21 Mach at sea level, 3.92 Mach at uh, altitude, and it looks like 65,000 feet is its max range. It can climb very fast. And it looks like it can hit missiles that are 30 feet off the ground, which is important. 
Um, so now we'll look at the SM2. So there are two versions of it. One is semi-active radar homing with an 85% chance to uh, hit a target at 50 nautical miles. The other, basically 5% chance higher because it also has this IR seeker. So this is definitely going to be a better missile than the ESSM. can also target things that are 30 feet above ground level, which is important. Uh, and it can go much higher. So anything that flies high, this can intercept it before it dives. Speed is about the same as the ESSM. Oh, one thing that's important, I should probably go back to look at the ESSM. Target speed of the SM2 here is 2300 knots. And this will come into play later. Same target speed on the ESSM. Now our best option is the SM6. The SM6 has a range of 130 miles and same 90%. It is active radar homing, so uh, for shooting down non-maneuvering missiles, course corrections are not required. It's fire and forget. It does not do anything more to tax the uh, guidance system. Uh, and it is faster, up to Mach 4.62 at altitude, and it can go high, 11, 000, I'm sorry, 115,000 compared to the SM2, which can go to 100,000 feet, and the ESSM, which can only go to like 55 or 65, I think, 65, right? Yeah. So for high-flying missile threats, fast missile threats as well, um, target speed, 6,500 knots. That's huge because that means that this, at least in this simulation, uh, this has a chance to intercept hypersonic missiles. Now, I believe it will still shoot at missiles regardless of this number, but I believe that it will increase or decrease the percentage role that it will have. Now, the ESSM is the preferred missile of choice to shoot down incoming missiles because in each VLS cell, you could fit a Tomahawk, an SM-6, an SM-2, uh, a rocket-assisted torpedo, or four ESSMs, they can quad pack them. So this weapon takes up the least amount of space. So in our launchers, our 128 launchers, we currently have 512 ESSM missiles. All right, so I'm going to actually back this guy up just a little bit. AWACS is going to be able to see it from range and no harm in putting him here. Right here looks good. So I'm going to have his radar on. Uh, now a lot of times in naval combat not every ship will have its radar on so it'll be visible over the horizon like this but in this case it's one ship and it wants to see incoming missiles. So again, onto this number right here, 96, Harpoon Slam Maverick equivalents. It's what conditions can it? If they're fired one after the other and it doesn't run out of ammo, it could probably go further. But nobody's going to fire one harpoon at it at a time for 96 harpoons and allow it time to reload. Well, it might not run out with these ESSMs, but you get my point. So it's got these illumination radars. This is going to be the bottleneck. It's going to limit how many missiles can get out at a time. All right, so we are going to set up about here is enemy Ticonderogas. 
And the reason I'm choosing the Ticonderoga, I'm going to put them a little closer. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that should be 96 harpoons. Aims to be able to withstand 96 harpoons. Time to prove it wrong. Oh, and one thing I'm going to set up here before I do anything else is a separate side called Observer. And I'm going to color code the sides from its perspective. So blue force is going to be neutral, green, and op4 will be unfriendly. That way, in God's eye view, oops, did I, how did I mess that up? Neutral and unfriendly. There we go. So we'll see orange missiles coming towards green target. <clears throat> All right. Oh, we're in the wrong one to order the attack. Up four. So let's look at the harpoon real quick. Range, 75 nautical miles. It's going to fly via surface skimmer, 30 feet above ground level. And it is going to be guided to the target uh, and then turn on its radar. It also has anti-radiation capability, but Either way, it's going to have no problem being guided to the target with the assistance of the AWACS. Even though these uh, these ships here will not be able to see the enemy Ticonderoga, doesn't matter. And it looks like these harpoons would definitely be able to overwhelm the air defenses and sink a Ticonderoga if enough of them are fired and hit. Uh, I'm guessing four or so Ticonderoga, actually four or so uh, harpoons will probably sink a Tyco. All right, so we're going to shift hit shift F1, target this Tyco, find the harpoons, and allocate all this weapon type and we're going to do this 12 times so this will fire 96 missiles in relatively quick succession at the Aegis cruiser and like I said before it's not if it's when these 96 missiles sink the target. That is my prediction. <laughs> All right, so the reason I had made an observer side is because when these missiles start coming in, they are going to alert us every time it sees a new missile, which is going to get obnoxious. However, what we do want to set up, if we can here, since we are on God's eye view, I think we can. Illumination vectors all, targeting vectors all, I think that's it, right? Data blocks, no. Data links, all, I think. No, wait, data links, selected unit. Otherwise, we'd be seeing all of those data links, I think. I think we're set up here. All right, so let's just speed this up and watch death come in All right, so it's firing missiles and its first missile goes out when these are about 14 nautical miles away so they're they're already too close this is just this is just going to be a brutal massacre now, if these missiles were spotted further out, then I think more missiles be shot down, but I can't see more than 50 missiles being shot down before this is just overwhelmed, and that might be pushing it, to be honest. Hmm. 
Now these harpoons don't maneuver, so they are pretty much sitting ducks, but still. How many can it deal with before it's overwhelmed? And some of these uh, ESSMs are missing. And radars are on. These radars may be jammed, but they have anti radiation seekers, so they're going to see what's. They're going to see what's up out there either way, and it's not looking good for this doomed Tycho. Now, it also has a... Let's also look at something that else it has here. It has 30 uh, bursts of the phalanx gun here, uh, which says it has a 80% chance to take out a sea skimmer uh, or capable versus sea skimmer but 80% chance to take out anything within a mile of it so it can engage sea skimmers that way but that's not going to be able to engage all sea skimmers coming in not it's not even going to come close does it say what interval it can fire at for the phalanx? Capacity 5, launch interval 4. Range 1 nautical mile. Well, we saw it was 0.8, but either way. It's only going to get one chance, I think. Maybe two if it starts firing right there, that missed. So that missile is probably going to get through. Oh, it was intercepted by an ESSM last second. And this Tycho is doomed. And it's sinking. All right. And we can see a few harpoons here were defeated, probably through countermeasures. But now let's go look at up four side here and I'm going to select all of these harpoons delete 53 units so 96 were fired 53 are left that's 43 missiles that were shot down so actually I have to write this down So I've got this in the notepad now that 43 were shot down and those are going to expire now. So we're going to do this all over again. The quickest way to get them back is just delete and re-add. Now yeah, I could obviously just make a mega Tycho, but this is probably quicker. How many was that? Six, okay. 9, 10, 11, 12. There we go, 96 missiles. Good, good, good. And another blue Tycho. Blue 4. And we'll put that Tycho here. And let's delete all these. Let's delete all those. That's already going to be deleted. <laughs> All right. So the reason I'm using the harpoon is it's a good baseline, I think.
and we will test uh, Russian missiles next, but the Harpoon's a good baseline to start out with, especially when the missile defense system in this game is based off of it. All right, so again, this is to see how many the system can handle, not how many missiles we have. So I'm loading as many missiles as we could fit. So we've got 128 of these SM2s, and we've got Mr. Bad Guys here with 96 uh, missiles again. So if we unpause it. And we see that ship. Alright, so they are going to all fire now. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, how many... So 68 ESSMs were fired last time. That's not bad. Okay, so these have the ability to home in on their own uh, because they have that active seeker. So I think they'll do better. We might run out of ammunition before we take all these out, though. So I believe in this game... They will be detected around here. And then, of course, it'll take a few seconds to start engaging. About 17 and a half miles out, things that, that are 30 feet off uh, the ground will be detected ish. All right, so there they go. Start firing at everything till we run out of ammo. I gotta say, I'm impressed so far. All right, time to slow it down and zoom in. Is there a minimum range that the SM? Two can be fired at though. I didn't check, I probably should have. But it looks like it's done firing now. Poor Tycho. Oh, no, it's not done. Alright. So, we select all of these, hit delete, there are 21 units left. So 96 minus 21 means that the Tycho had dealt with 75 missiles. Maybe those two it jammed or defeated with countermeasures, it probably didn't. They probably, they probably just passed the sinking ship. Either way, we will write that down here. Which was more than I thought it would do. That's definitely better than I thought they would do. 
All right, so we're going to go back to Opcor and reset this one last time. Oh, oops. Well, we want to keep it to be the same one just for. I don't think the harpoon's been upgraded, but I'm still keeping it to the same one. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But let's delete all that to make sure. And last Tyco here. SM6s only. I have to say, though, that they are doing better against surface skimmers than I thought they would. So now, of course, they would never have a loadout of just one type of missile, but we're just seeing how effective that particular missile is. All right, so we should pick up the next uh, ship. And harpoons away. All 12 of them firing their harpoons. And we can now switch to Observer. Make sure that all harpoons were shot. Good. And our raiders are on. Good. So the SM6s probably will be able to be fired quicker. I still don't know they're going to take out everything, but worth trying. <clears throat> so what I plan on doing with this ultimately long term is I'm going I'm using this as a baseline, but I'm going to be testing uh, heavily how this will stack up to, say, the long-range anti-ship missile, the BrahMos missile from India, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, Zircon missile from Russia, uh, Onyx is a Russian missile, uh, Caliber, all of the Russian missiles, even some of the NATO missiles. Alright, so this is getting overwhelmed rather quick. Next hit will kill. Alright. So all those I was just a little slow on. So one, two, three. So if we go to op four, I noticed those were all going towards it, so I was just a little slow on the draw there. Well, more of them were coming in too, jeez. 37 units. So 59 were shot down. Uh, 
All right, so we're getting a reasonable uh, estimation here of what uh, what uh, can be uh, shot down and what uh, can be survived, at least from a vanilla uh, weak, uh, <laughs> slow, old surface skimmer. So now we'll see. Now we'll see uh, how big and bad are these other missiles that might get shot at it. All right, so next time we will see how uh, how the uh, Zircon missile fares.